Hello and welcome to Vita number two. Of course, this will be vlog every day, August, or video every day, August. I'm doing kind of like a mix and match of both. And since it is the anniversary month of my main webcomic, Fred Peterson, The Mighty Warlord, I decided to kind of mesh the things together. I guess do kind of like a month of trying to put videos up every day and also have it to be centered around uh, bits and pieces that I really haven't talked about before about my webcomic Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord. In other podcasts I've recorded and other videos and lives that I've spoken about, um, I do make a big clarification that I didn't get that much inspiration from Spider-Man for my comic, uh, especially since that is the main comparison that I always get to, whether it be by character designs or storyline elements, there's a lot of comparisons to Spider-Man. There are their influences, of course, but as I've stated before, the main influences really are uh, 90s comics such as The Ray um, from the 90s, originally written the miniseries by Jack C. Harris and illustrated by Joe Quesada, of course, the comic that made me want to make comics. And of course, eventually the ongoing series written by arguably my favorite and one of the most influential writers, uh, Christopher Priest. Uh, and illustrated by the incredible Howard Porter. Uh, that was the series that made me want to do my own Warlord comic. So it was around this time, like I was already starting high school when all this was starting to happen um the ray ongoing series and by that time i was kind of like after um last if you watched the live stream yesterday for vita part one uh i spoke briefly of it i go a little bit more into detail in my serene chaos podcasts but I brought up the aspect of the super wars and the cyber wars that I had in middle school with my best friends who were also uh, geeks. It was kind of like the first time I actually had a meeting of the geeks when I was growing up as a kid in New York in elementary school. I really didn't have another friend that was into comics and all that nerd culture. Like back then, nerd was an N-word, so to speak. Um, not like nowadays that's pretty much nerd and geek culture is mainstream we were pretty much ostracized for liking all that stuff back when I was uh, younger though I particularly never was bullied too much over it compared to other kids that I knew because even when I was little for some reason I was able to float around into different um, the different spectrum of you know, cliques and groups that forms in schools and whatnot. You know, sometimes the, the more jock kids would talk to me because, like I said in one of my previous live streams, my uh, father wanted me to be a sports, uh, an athletic kind of kid, wanted me to be very much into sports. So I would hang out with them sometimes. I would hang out with, like, the more uh, geeky, I guess, kids as well the more artsy kids you know I pretty much floated in all those circles uh, relatively well I guess but I didn't really have like someone to really talk about the latest comic or the latest animation or whatever that changed when I got to middle school when we moved to Puerto Rico where I met other kids that were very much into it um, and I still talk to them every now and again to this day uh, we have stayed in contact you know sometimes it's like kind of those friendships that last forever even if there's like uh, spots where you really don't talk with them like eventually like one or the other will like touch base with the other like hey what's up you know so that's very cool so I was transitioning from the um, being in that uh, middle school uh, it was actually a private school. I believe I've mentioned it before. My mom made many sacrifices to have me go to middle school in a private school because she felt that the public school in Puerto Rico 
in that town that we were living was a little quote unquote dangerous. I always thought like, well, New York public school back then in the area we lived in was probably going to be even more dangerous anyway. But okay, you know, there's not much of an option there. Now it's not like. I was of the age of having an option or voicing an opinion about the matter. So I ended up going to that private school for grades 7 through ninth grade. And all those three years, we had a lot of fun with our, you know, character developments. It was like our escape because uh, that group of kids and I kind of really hated being in that private school because just because it's a private school, it doesn't mean that it's a good school. You know, this isn't a slight to that private school. It was fine, I guess, but the problem with quote unquote problem with private schools sometimes is that's kind of like the dead end for our parents that actually can't afford to like send their kid to a private school because they got kicked out of every other school that was around so there were certainly elements of that in that private school and um also the son of the owners of the private school was actually in the same age and group that we were so you know there was a lot of tension there you know and a lot of pressure uh, a lot of that pressure came from ourselves also, but, you know, we were kids. We couldn't handle the pressure, I guess, of being in a private school, trying to do your best and all that stuff. Uh, luckily, I was able to um, transition well into it and continue to be an honor student and be a standout student, um, scholastically, at least. You know, but we were all kind of messed up emotionally back then. And, of course, comics and creating was our escape. So then I was going to go from a situation where I was going to um, graduate middle school in that private school and transition into the public high school, which was a lot more safer than the middle school was. Uh, we heard a lot of good things about that public high school. And it was relatively close to my parents' home, so... I <coughs> oh, excuse me. So I can just walk over there. So the time came, I went to that public school uh, in high school. Uh, I always been kind of an introvert, so... It was kind of rough adapting into that new environment, uh, not really knowing anyone because everyone else that were was in that private school with me lived in different towns. So they were going to schools a lot closer to their own hometown. So I was literally starting over fresh there without any of my old friends, even though eventually I did run into some of my older friends that just happened to go to that high school that I was that I really wasn't close with, but I guess we became closer once we were in that high school because of that familiarity of like, hey, I know you kind of thing, you know? And so I had this universe of characters that I had created during those three years in middle school. And I just happened to just want to keep doing stories with them even if it weren't wasn't like a crossover with other friends and whatnot um, by that time some of my friends had also kind of moved on from like that comic book phase and were you know high school discovering you know relationship roles and stuff like that I never really got into that much because again I was obsessed with creating comics and just creating artwork so I was always like that odd kid out in that sense even though in high school again for some reason I floated throughout all the clicks like I could just be under a tree drawing one moment a jock will sit down talk to me we talk sports and whatnot they would leave then the goths would come around and sit with me and talk about life or whatever and then they would leave then the satanists because yes they were actual satanists also in that school 
we'll sit down with me and just chill and talk and we like cool whatever <laughs> you know like pretty much every walk of life you can think of would sit down next to me even though I was being this recluse sitting down with a sketchbook yes so I wouldn't run into people I don't know it, it, even to this day it, it kind of still happens even when I'm in the subway, I could be reading something and someone will like ask me about my opinion of what I was reading or be like, hey, I read that book, you know, and again, it's just people from my all walks of life. Anyway, I, like I mentioned in that previous a live stream from yesterday, um, I was the kind of like the first one of that group in the private school that I was starting to do more original stories that were more self-contained within my universe as opposed to doing stories and illustrating this massive crossover that we were all doing. So I guess it was kind of easy in a way when I went into high school and I didn't really have like that back and forth, you know, like with other kids and their characters. So I started to experiment. I did like a lot of little one shots of characters like the Mysterious Exorcist, which I mentioned was probably the first character that I created that's within the Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord universe. So I did a one shot of him. I did a one shot of Danger Zone, which again features prominent characters from Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord. And then I would do like the awkward stuff like the... Um, comic book strip inspired Wepamani Wepita which again something that I did as a throwaway joke in like 7th grade in that private school and I decided to like turn it on its head and do it uh, give it its own personality and make it wacky and wild and you know experimented with that too I was experimenting creating new characters and stories like um, and I probably I'm going to do this comic at some point. Um, my most ambitious comic that I was thinking about was doing like this four issue miniseries, which was basically my Punisher called Acts of Vengeance. I think I actually have an illustration somewhere on my Facebook of that original comic I made. It's like one of the most 90s covers you can ever imagine. Like you have the logo of course acts of vengeance and the a is almost like in the shape of a police badge there's this long-haired dude in a trench coat aiming a bazooka at the reader with of course the speech bubble of him saying boom you can't get more 90s than that even if you tried and i have tried <laughs> it's just it's just fun silly stuff and then um, of course, after the Ray ongoing series came out, that's when I decided to revisit Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord. Like, Warlord was always my most popular character since I created him, like, in eighth grade. Everyone just really loved that character in school. And, of course, I was, um, I had a very, um, I was very partial to him as well because, as I saw his popularity, like, that was, like, the one character that I actually kind of went the extra mile to flesh out a little more. So he was, like, the first superhero character that I gave a very intrinsic background and origin, and that just kept evolving from there. You know, it almost kind of took a life of its own. So I went ahead and did that, um issue number zero because all of them were like issue zeros it was when issue zeros were a big big thing in the early 90s especially after zero hour well when they released like a bunch of zero issues and whatnot so i put a lot of effort into issue number zero of warlord which i guess you know it was used to be simply titled warlord and then um, I kind of give it a rest and I was actually going to do an ongoing series actually of another character that I had created called Orion. Uh, Orion was this kind of alien 
that arrived to Earth and kind of decided to be its protector in a way. And I had like this whole storyline set up. Um, it was also like one of the more um, popular characters I had created um, during that during that space between seventh and ninth grade in the private school. So I just wanted to really do that. So I started doing like the half of issue number one. I was getting really into it. And then um, my sister actually, when she started, um, when she got like a promotion at her job at that time and she was still living with us, uh, she decided to put cable TV in at our home because she really missed, you know, watching American programs that wasn't available in Puerto Rican television and the few that would be would be of course uh, dubbed into Spanish so she went ahead and she put cable on you know just like the basic cable and I rediscovered Fox and their morning lineup of cartoons and whatnot and that's when I actually ran into the 90s Spider-Man animated cartoon for the first time. I didn't even know there was an animated Spider-Man cartoon at the time. And when I saw that, and I immediately recognized Joe Perry because I've always been an Ariel Smith fan. Even when I was a very little kid, I used to love Ariel Smith. I immediately re recognized like Joe Perry's guitar riff in the opening. I'm like, what is this? You know, and of course, Joe, Pe Joe Perry, like, with a distorted voice, and Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Radioactive Spider-Man. I was hooked with that, in from that intro on. And the that first episode I ever saw, I believe it, the, it was the introduction into that animated universe of Hydro-Man. Well, again, this was around the time that I had already had a couple of years where I had started collecting mainstream comics like Marvel and DC and whatnot. So I was somewhat familiar with some of the characters already. So it was mind-blowing to actually watch it animated in especially like new animation because the last animation I recall seeing from Spider-Man was reruns of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. It probably was the first animated Spider-Man since uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. So it was just exciting. And by the end of that episode, I went to my notebook where I was almost finished doing issue number one of Orion. And I ripped out those pages. I ripped out those pages. I threw it away. And I said, if I'm going to make a series, I might as well do it of a character that's really grown attached for me. So I'm just going to do Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord. Uh, actually, um, it wasn't Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord back then. As I said, like issue number zero, I think it was simply the Mighty War. Um, it was simply Warlord. And then for the Notebook series, that's when I kind of changed it to the Mighty Warlord. And uh, as the series evolved, that's when I also just went ahead and changed it to Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord. You know, kind of like inspired by the Marvel Spider-Man stuff also. You know, like Peter Parker, Spider-Man and whatnot. Like, those are the things that I will readily admit in, uh, from Spider-Man that inspired uh, Fred Peterson, the Mighty Warlord. So, yeah, it was essentially that episode of Hydro Man in um, the 90s Spider-Man the animated series that actually made me want to do a comic book series of Fred Peterson the Mighty Warlord and that was also coming off of issue number zero which I had done like maybe the year before or, or quite a few months before yeah it was actually quite a few years before because yeah, like about a year because I did, I believe, issue number zero in 94. And then it was in 95 that I started doing like the actual ongoing series. 
like there was more spider-man stuff that inspired um warlord as well but i'll get to it as the month goes on um i'm just gonna cut this uh video short here i just wanted to kind of you know i'm sure this little story of what inspired me to do the actual notebook series which i think i really haven't hadn't touched upon in too much detail uh, so to kind of give you guys more context of uh, why things happened and how my mind kind of works in a way i guess um yeah that's pretty much how the birth of the issue number zero came from and the birth of the notebook series ongoing series came about and of course that went on for 50 issues and a couple of mini series that i did afterwards to just wrap up some loose ends so yeah that's gonna be all for today thank you as always so much for checking this out uh, i hope you have a great day and i will catch you all next time